more on this. Michael Arnold, a researcher at our World Research Center, joins me now in the studio. Michael, thanks for coming in. Now, there are some protests who say for the first time, um, Lebanon is experiencing real independence due to these demonstrations because it's brought together people from all walks of life in the country. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, I think there's significance to that, that statement. There's no doubt about it that this uh, wave of protests that we've seen in Lebanon uh, is really unprecedented for the country in the fact that it has uh, begun and remained cross-sectarian, largely uh, across the socioeconomic uh, spectrum, as well as across the political spectrum. Having said that, uh, the political situ and social situation there is very complicated. So, you know, I think there's, there's, while there is hope, there's a long way to go before, you know, we can really kind of take that statement at face value. But, but it should be said that definitely these are, uh, you know, you could say that things have changed in Lebanon and probably will never go back to exactly as they were. Well, these protests started last month and they actually led to the resignation of Prime Minister Saad Hariri on the 29th of October. However, a new, um, the formation rather of a new cabinet is still being, is still be ongoing at this moment. What's the holdup? Sure, there's a, there's a number of holdups in the process right now. So technically speaking, the president should have called for uh, binding parliamentary negotiations to designate a new prime minister. However, he has preferred to take the route to allow sort of the main party leaders and the main political players to effectively hash it out amongst themselves uh, before they actually, he actually makes that call. Uh, there's a number of sticking points. However, the main one at this point is the fact that uh, Saad Hariri, who's now the caretaker prime minister, uh, and some of his political allies, specifically uh, uh, Jumblat of the Progressive Socialist Party and uh, the Lebanese forces, have uh, supported the position of having a purely technocratic government led by Hariri, meaning a government of experts to sort of guide Lebanon through uh, this uh, economic and political crisis it's going through. On the other hand, you have Hezbollah and its ally in the Free Patriotic Movement uh, who oppose this demand and are calling instead for what they're calling a mixed cabinet of both mm -hmm. technocrats or experts and political appointees. Um, at the end of the day, though, what we're seeing here, which is sort of the irony of the whole thing, is that although the politicians are speaking to many of the demands of the protesters, which of course one of them is this formation of this technocratic government, you have the same faces, the same players who are essentially negotiating amongst themselves again uh, yeah. to ensure that uh, they retain at least uh, you know, their positions of power. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's stuck in a bit of a holding pattern right now. Let's just touch on uh, some of the demands from the protesters. Uh, you mentioned one of them. What else are they wanting, and do you think they're actually realistic? Sure, yeah. Like I said, one of the main ones is this formation of a uh, government of experts. Uh, the protesters themselves have, have now called for it to be independent experts, right? So to sort of get around some of the political calls for maybe having non-political affiliated experts uh, who are not politicians, but maintain, let's say, loyal ties to various political factions. So one of the calls is for this independent uh, government of experts. Another really important call is for uh, the, the advancement of corruption trials, for example. There's a number of cases that have been before the judiciary for uh, some of them in cases years uh, that they are calling to be moved forward. And in that respect, there has been some progress on that. The uh, financial crimes prosecutor has moved forward some of these cases, some of them against former ministers, uh, but that remains to be seen as well. There's a number of other calls which include, uh, of course, this overarching call to reform the political system, to move away from the sectarian confessionalist uh, system that they have uh, and to move towards early elections as well. So these, we can say, are probably the main ones. There is a lot of other demands that are in there as well, but these seem to be the core ones that are uh, united amongst most of the people who are in the streets. Okay, Michael Arnold, thanks so much for that analysis. Appreciate it.